We all want to take our modeling to the next level. But what if I told you the best tool you could use to improve your modeling wasn't a hand tool at all? Helicon Focus is a software that you can use to create flawlessly focused pictures of your models. No other activity in your modeling life will encourage you more to build more models to build better models than a perfectly focused photo for you to research your flaws or go ahead and share on social media. Go and get your 20% off of Helicon Focus now by going to modelersguild.com slash HF. And we thank Helicon Focus for the support of the Scale Model Show. So it's that time of year again. Time for what? Time for a new show. So what's the show about, Ron? So of course I have a topic to share, but I don't want to make a whole show about uh, the hobby that I've been in for the last seven years. I want to expand my exposure to other types of experiences in the hobby of scale modeling. I'm interested in things like sci-fi, uh, post-apocalyptic futuristic stuff. I, I feel the need that if I have the opportunity to make my own show, I want to go all out and do what I want to do. I don't want to be stuck in somebody else's box. I want to learn the tricks artists learn through their passion. I want to learn about their passion. I want to learn about art in a new way, from a new perspective, and hopefully this show is going to give me the ability to do that. Basically, I want to expand my abilities by thinking outside the box. And most importantly, I want to uh, make videos that relate to a younger crowd. Enjoy the first episode. I'm real nervous about all of it. Just go easy on me. Uh, so this is episode number one of the Scale Model Show. <sighs> I hope there is no swear words written behind me. I'm a simple guy and the way I make videos is to show people that building great models is just a bunch of little achievable steps. I screw things up, so follow along and see how I fix my screw ups. Cause those are the things that make you a great modeler, is fixing up all your mess ups. Recreating water isn't as hard as it seems. The hard part of modeling water is having faith in the task not in how it's done. I find water easier because it has a texture that is defined by its direction. Its color is defined by what's in it. And the top, well, that's easy. It has to be shiny. Our water happens to be in St. Mary's, Ontario, Canada, a place where I lived during my adventure growing up. However, that isn't how this project started. Recently, I was inspired to share my hobby with some sick kids. I was set on making something very easy to set up, but also to store away in a very efficient way. But most of all, I wanted to build something that would set their imaginations on fire. But let's get started on the river. Please remember though, this project will not be finished today. These work sessions are presented over a period of days, so be patient. This isn't a step-by-step. -step. Each project is different. Yours surely will have something different than mine. A reference photo handily describes our project scene, which is in the fall. Most leaves have fallen from the trees. Only a few have green leaves left behind. Housekeeping's important to me. I like to clean things up because I can't move on if I've got too many distractions in front of me. Speaking of distractions, I like to cover anything that's white with any color, even if it's not the color I'm going to use in the end. You know what they say about trouble and rolling downhill. <laughs> You know what I mean. 
water rolls downhill too. So we've got to build plateaus for our water to be able to flow realistically through our scene. But first of all, I have to use my heat gun to, uh, to mold the river banks so that when we put in our piece of foam here, uh, it looks realistic up against the bank. We're gonna put some sand on that later, do all that jazz, but we'll get to that when time comes. So next, glue down our piece of foam and weigh it down with our handy dandy weights. Now the color of water is an interesting topic. Let me know when you get to the bottom of it. I usually change my mind a lot on color. Now I'm starting off with blue, but I change my mind as time goes on, and that's the way my modeling goes. Uh, you know, uh, at first I had an idea that the water looked blue, but then when I look back at the video, it kinda looks green, so I kinda changed that near the end of the video. Uh, but for now, we, we just wanna get color on this. I still don't like the color, so I can spray it down with my water bottle and use a little bit of spray paint to uh, add some darkness to the water because that was really bugging me. Spraying the foam with water protects it from being eaten by the solvent paint. Actually, in the next segment, we use the same technique to get different results on the wall. When people watch me build models in my shop, Sometimes I hear them say this is kind of like a calamity of errors. I must say though, I have to agree. Great modeling is all about tearing apart the stuff that you're not happy with and doing it over again. Patience is the key. Making our limestone with retaining walls is pretty much just as easy as the rest of it. I'm going to be like a broken record through this whole show. All we want to do is we want to take our thin piece of foam board, torn, taking the paper off each side because we don't want that paper to come off at a later date when it's decided to lose its stickiness or connection to the foam. So my trick to making a brick wall or a block wall in this case is to fool the eye into thinking that there's bricks all the way through it. We're not going to cut every block into the wall. We're just going to represent the texture of the wall so that your eye thinks that it's looking at a wall. So just because there's a few in every audience, I'll make a few vertical cuts into this wall just to, for demonstration purposes. Next we're going to take our water and we're going to spray it onto this piece because we want to spray paint it now. A nice coat on it but not too much. I don't want the paint pooling on it because it's going to eat, the, eat it straight through to the bottom. Eating it up right there. You could probably see it too. So just like the riverbed, the water stopped the paint from eating all the way through the foam. Using a coarse sponge, we used the dried brushing technique to paint the wall, as usual with our earth tone color. This time our earth tone color is a little bit more gray. Once the paint is cured on your retaining walls, you can now install them using your regular white glue. To make sure that the walls are straight and level, use toothpicks to force them into position while the glue is drying. Once again using foam board, we sanded down pieces that looked like the limestone slabs that were in our reference photos. I added the rocks and the waterfall using the same method as the retaining wall, also using toothpicks to hold it in place while it dries.
Now that the stones are installed in our river, the last thing for us to do today is to paint the riverbed with the new revised colors. Every project I do changes ever so slightly during the project because the image in my mind's eye becomes clearer and clearer as time goes on. While researching this video, I took a good look at water, and what I see is black with green. So, in my model, I'm going to put black around the outside, and closer to the middle, I'm going to put green. And then, I'm going to mix those two colors together so that we get a combination of both those colors, and hopefully, after we put down our clear gloss, uh, we'll be able to see these colors through it. In a future video, I'll show you how to make these grass tufts, but that's a whole other video. So until then, we're just going to use these grass tufts that I got on hand uh, in our river because they have that real autumn look, that yellow, dried, uh, almost dead end of year look to them. So uh, it's better to add those before you try adding water to this river. So, uh, you know, this is the time to do it. I guarantee that there's a hundred different ways to make water on your diorama. Some smell real bad, some are non-toxic, like this gel acrylic medium that you find in most art stores. However, I find it important to note to you that this gel took a month and a half to cure in my cold damp shop. So apply the gel in thin layers with a brush. Build up your peaks as time goes on because a thin layer will dry fairly quickly. Working in layers allows you to build up your waves and direction of flow as you go on in later coats. Good luck! Remember I talked about screwing up and showing you what happened? Well, it took about a month for the gel to dry and when it did dry I was left with this little white milky uh, look around the sides of uh, the lower river bank because I added water to the gel and tried to loosen it up so it'd get around the weeds and all that stuff. Maybe adding the weeds uh, before the gel wasn't a good idea. Maybe I should have plopped the weeds in the gel. But also I have to get rid of that milky color because I don't think it's ever going to go away. So I'm going to use my flat black acrylic paint and just paint over top of the sides. I want to leave the little, the middle a little bit so that it's got depth. And also I want to add a little bit of green to the spots that look kind of blue and, uh, well, I just got to fix up the colors. And after I'm done painting, we will fix our shiny surface with some polyurethane interior gloss paint found at most uh, hardware stores. Just look for polyurethane gloss. Well, folks, that's show one in the bag, and I just want to give a hearty thank you to my friends over at Maker Studios for giving me this opportunity. And believe me when I say I really do feel this is an opportunity because my modeling is growing farther away from model railroading. I'm learning how much I'm really passionate about scale modeling or building uh, scenes in scale. I, I'm not really interested in the train. So, you know, this really is allowing me to move forward in ways that I wasn't able to do so before. So thanks, Maker. And I want to especially thank you for watching these videos. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be doing these videos. So it's really nice to have somebody, you know, noticing my stuff. Um, you know, I'll bet you it's kind of nice to watch somebody make all the mistakes too, you know? It's, I, I take all the bullets so that you guys can shine, right? So, I do that. And hey, if you want to show some support to the show, just check us out at patreon.com slash Ron Perry. It's just a buck a month. Or more, hundred bucks a month, maybe a thousand a month, twenty thousand.